Hello everybody, I am back after a month long hiatus and I just wanted to give a quick update on how the CZ Bren 2 MS is actually doing. Um, if you can refer to my last video, you'll probably notice that this thing looks substantially different from how it did before. Uh, my last video was just basically, you know, an unboxing video showing how it came from the factory and, you know, what I thought of it at that time. Well, um, this is quite a bit later. Uh, I've run probably a little over half a case of ammo through this thing, so we're probably sitting uh, somewhere around a 600 round round count so far. Um, I'll just go ahead and spoil one aspect of the story with this thing. Uh, it has been flawless so far. Uh, zero malfunctions whatsoever. Um, I know these things, uh, well, we'll just get to that later, but, uh, just in case anybody was wondering, yes, this is the 11 inch 762 by 39 variant. It is a registered SBR, uh, full disclosure. I am now a FFL. I am a, um, licensed manufacturer 0702 SOT. But anyway, I'll just, uh, I'll talk about that a little later. That's been a fun little journey in and of itself. But yeah, let's just talk about this thing real quick. Just going to give you some quick thoughts about it, uh, how it's performed for me so far. And I'm just going to talk about this particular setup since, I mean, this thing is, it's, I, I think the way that I have it right now is pretty much perfect. Uh, I've still got basically one thing left to do to it, but I'm going to talk about that in just a sec. But let's start at the front where the muzzle is. Um, since I last showed it to you, I've actually installed a, a dead air muzzle brake. Um, this is the 762 variant. Uh, it's a three port brake. And, um, you know, we removed the factory flash hider. Uh, this thing will be suppressed pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, dead air suppressors. I'm probably going to get the, uh, the titanium Nomad variant specifically and rock it exclusively on this rifle. And that's where we uh, are at the moment until that can comes in. Um, we have also installed the 11 inch HBI handguard. Uh, this was a rather expensive upgrade, but it was well worth the money, even though HBI did come out with a Gen 2 version of this handguard, which has the cutout right here where the, uh, the gas relief valve and the, the gas plug are. Um, it does make it a lot easier to adjust since it currently has just this little extension piece right here, which, you know, has this little rod that attaches to the, uh, uh, the gas, the gas plug, uh, or the gas adjustment knob, I should say. And it's kind of a bitch to adjust right now because you kind of have to take all this shit apart if you want to tune the gas. Well, the new handguard fixes that, but... Unfortunately, I bought the older model before I knew that a Gen 2 version was coming out. Still like it quite a bit. I will say this handguard is a very impactful upgrade for this weapon system because the factory handguard, again, if you've seen the original uh, handguard or the, the factory handguard that come, came on here, it's very short. Uh, it has basically like no attachment mounting points. Uh, it's only got like three, six, and nine. It's M lock. It's only got one slot on all those positions, and it quite frankly sucks. So, with that said, we install the upgrade. It is a game changing. Um, uh, it, it's it it it's a game changer for this rifle. Uh, it, it basically needs it if you ask me, because it allows you to place your hand further out on the rifle, actually attach accessories to it like lights, lasers, whatever, hand stops. Um, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, can't recommend it enough, although I'd probably say spring for the newer variant of this handguard. Um, we do have a, a QD attachment uh, socket that I've installed right here. Um, you know, just for mounting a sling. Uh, there is a QD socket built into the rear of the receiver right here, so I just like running a little two-point sling whenever I have this thing slung up. Uh, makes things a lot easier to mount it up here further forward. Uh, although the uh, HBI handguard does come with a uh, its own little socket that you can mount on either side, it is reversible. Uh, but with that said, uh, we have the BCM Kinesthetics angled uh, hand stop right here. These are actually NC Star Vism uh, M lock covers. Um, yeah, they're NC Star, I know, but they're actually quite nice. Uh, they're very well textured. Um, there's actually two of them per M lock slot and you can just kind of put them wherever you want and they feel kind of good. And for this specific handguard, they cover these, 
these uh, slots quite well. So I like them quite a bit. Um, we do have the Olight Odin. Um, this is the tungsten, I guess, version over here. This is actually in a, uh, a Magpul uh, M-Lock offset mount. I did a review on these Odins once before. Um, I'll probably update that review, but uh, long story short, the lights are okay in my opinion. They're fine. I'm not really a huge fan of the, uh, you know, this. I mean, it works, but um, I found it actually tends to come loose uh, under live fire at times. Uh, they claim it's not supposed to, but it, it has for me. Of course, it still works normally whenever you use the button, but I mean, this tape switch is not, I mean, this, you know, this pressure pad, it's not the greatest. It works, but I, you know, light's fine. Just replace the mount. Um, and as long as you can deal with this bullshit bag here, I mean, the light's fine. It works. Um, I like the way that it charges. I mean, it's fine. I know there's better options out there, but I just like it because I kind of color matched it with some parts. Anyway. So, back to the rifle. Um, we have the HBI Industries trigger. Uh, it's an inexpensive upgrade. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's not a huge upgrade, but it is nice. Uh, it's definitely better than stock. Uh, basically, this thing kind of just, more or less, it just shortens the, uh, the over travel aspect of the trigger. So, once you pull, you know, it's still a nice little two stage trigger, basically. I'll just try to show it to you guys here. Once you pull, you know, very crisp, clean break. Uh, the factory trigger had a bit of over travel, but this one kind of gets rid of that. Uh, it straightens out the trigger bow. It, it's a little wider. It's it's actually made of metal where the factory one is made out of polymer. So nice little upgrade. Can't complain too much. Didn't cost too much either. So win-win with that. Um, Back to the weapon here. <sighs> these mags, the uh, factory CZ mags, of course, these are the 762 by 39 mags. They're not really that easy to find, or at least they hadn't been up until recently. Um, they're about, what, 27, between about 27 and $32, depending on where you look. These mags are fine. Uh, they work great. Uh, they do have last round bolt hold open, um, unlike AKs, for example. So I find this weapon system, it, especially chambered in 762 by 39 to be pretty awesome. Um, but I'll, I'll get to my overall thoughts about that. But the mags, uh, they were kind of a bitch to find in the past. They're a little better now. So anyway, um, yeah. And speaking of the, uh, the handguard, um, it has, it's held into place by a total of four screws. Okay, two on this side and two on this side. Now this QD cup that comes with it is reversible. You can put it on either side. Uh, I know some of you guys have probably noticed this. <laughs> that is of my own doing. Uh, that's just something I decided to do because it makes me feel better. I have no idea if it strengthens the, you know, the, the contact points for this handguard, but you know, there's only four screws holding it into place. Um, there are screw holes uh, in the bottom of the trunnion uh, back here. And, you know, basically I just took one of those leftover screws from the factory handguard and put a washer behind it and, uh, you know, just put it there, tighten it up, provided a fifth point of contact. I have no idea if that actually makes any difference whatsoever as far as, you know, accuracy, durability, whatever. But I just decided to put it there because what the fuck, you know, uh, didn't hurt and uh, <laughs> I haven't had any problems with it. So I'm going to leave it there unless uh, I have a problem with it anyway. Uh, we have the HBI Industries Enhanced Safety. It is bigger than the factory safety. Um, it's not a necessary upgrade, but I found it to be a worthwhile upgrade considering it's rather inexpensive. And it does give you a lot more to grab onto when manipulating the safety. So I like it. Um, yeah, so this is the factory waffle stock this is the one that comes on the military variants of these weapons and i actually purchased this um and yeah uh it's <laughs> let me just talk about it real quick so if you get the waffle stock this is the og i mean there, there's you know the newer ms model stock that's out 
Uh, this one does not have adjustable cheek piece or anything like that. Uh, it still folds and locks into place. It can be fired folded as you see the ejection port is not blocked no matter what position the stock is in. And I find the stock to be quite nice. It has no rattle, no wobble whatsoever. It's very sturdy. It is all polymer. It has this rubber butt pad on it. And I find the stock to be well worth the money. Um, the only thing I don't particularly care for is this basically just like a three position stock. You have fully extended right here, which I mean, it's kind of short. Um, you have the middle position and then you have fully collapsed and that's it. So three positions, none of them are particularly long for, you know, tall folks and people who require long length to pull, but you know, um, it works fine. It's very sturdy. Um, it fits the aesthetics of the rifle quite well. Um, and it is a recommended upgrade should you decide to SBR your Bren 2 pistols. Otherwise, if you get the MS variant the carbines, uh, you know, they come with a newer MS model stock, which is a commercial offering only. And it is more functional than this one. Yes, uh, it has QD cups on both sides of the stock, and I believe it has an adjustable cheek riser. Um, so, I mean, if you have the option, that is something to consider. But honestly, I just think this one suits the... <laughs> the aesthetics of the rifle a little more just my opinion uh we do have uh the dan haga backstrap uh this is like a 3d printed little backstrap um it is bigger than the factory backstrap that came on this thing so i have noticed that it does indeed make a difference in how this weapon feels because the factory backstrap is very small it's a couple millimeters thinner uh, so it positions your hand a lot further forward when you, you know, have your hand on firing on the pistol grip. Uh, it does make manipulating the safety easier if you use a larger bag strap. Uh, pulling the trigger is a lot more comfortable. It's just, it just feels more natural because the, the factory bag strap and the factory grip are quite frankly very small, very thin. Uh, not the most comfortable grips in the world, but they work. Uh, this just makes it better. It is like 50 bucks though. So, you know, whether or not it's worth it to you, I don't know, but I got it and I find it to be a, it's an impactful upgrade, I'll say that. Um, so anyway, uh, we have the Vortex uh, UH-1. This is the Gen 2 Huey. It is a holographic sight. Um, I do think it suits the look and the aesthetics of this rifle quite well. Um, I mean, I was going to go with some other options, but I, I like this one. Again, holographic sight. Let's see if I can get that reticle. Can we? Can we? Can we? Ah, uh, yeah, it's kind of washed out. It's really blurry. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Can we? Can we? Can we? Nah, I don't think we can. Anyway, so the Huey. Um, this isn't an optic review. I'll probably have to do one on this thing later, but I have a really bad astigmatism, so the reticle doesn't look that great, but I mean, this optic is built like a tank. I like it on this rifle, and I guess that's really all I'll say about that for now, but uh, if we flip the rifle over, you know, this is what it looks like from this side. Got the Odin, got the Magpul mount. Um, what else can I say about this thing? Well, let's just talk about the shooting experience. So again, we got about 600 rounds through it at this point. I have never had a single malfunction with it, although 600 rounds is, you know, depending on who you ask, that round count is relatively low, but ammo is still high as shit. So, you know, that's all we've got to work with for now. Uh, again, zero malfunctions. I've shot primarily um, Golden Tiger 124 grain full metal jacket through it. Uh, that's run flawlessly. Uh, I have run some 124 grain hollow points through it, uh, just at random. They didn't have any, uh, you know, issues feeding or anything. They worked fine, but you know, with full metal jacket, this thing just chews through it. It's it's kind of a beast. Um, speaking of the uh, chewing through stuff, 
uh, depending on where you look on the internet or depending on whose videos you watch on YouTube or whatever, I mean, you'll probably hear that the 7.62x39 variants of these tend to have some issues. Um, I'm not going to downplay that because I know some guys have most definitely had issues, but I have not. So when I first got this thing, I probably ran like two mags through it. Uh, and then I started doing all my upgrades to it and I do have the HBI Industries high load piston spring in there and I've been rocking that thing since like the round count was 60 um, so that did you know factor a role into this thing's reliability I would imagine I have no idea how it would perform without it but I'm not going to take it out to find out because it's been working perfectly for me so I'm just going to keep it that way but long story short that upgrade is like seven bucks it's extremely cheap uh, from what I've gathered uh, from other owners uh, who have used it, it's quite effective and it does help solve potential issues that these things might run into because by most accounts, uh, the 7.62 variants are extremely overgassed. Uh, not all of them, but quite a few of them are quite heavily overgassed. This one is most definitely overgassed, um, but it works. Now, I know the first couple mags that I ran through it before I installed the spring, it was ejecting primarily at like 2 o'clock occasionally at about 1.30, 1 o'clock or so, but it still functioned. After I put the spring in there, ejection has been more along the lines of 2.30, 3 o'clock pretty consistently, although I'll get an occasional round, probably shoot off close to 2, but again, it's working pretty well. So. Round count around 600. I hope it continues to work well. Until then, or until I have any issues with it, I'm just gonna keep running it as is. But anyway, um, as far as my closing thoughts on this thing, I love it. I like it quite a freaking bit. Um, I think this rifle is pretty much arguably the best 7.62x39 rifle on the planet. As far as modern features, ergonomics, and just, you know, when you take the whole package into account, this thing is fucking awesome. Uh, it is lighter than any AK you'll ever pick up. Uh, this thing is extremely light. It's like AR light, okay? Now, it is bulky. It's kind of chunky. And, you know, it's got this thick, girthy handguard. Um, you know, and, and it does require a few little tweaks like you know the handguard if you want to replace that and you know throw a proper stock on it and maybe the back strap here you know the, the rest of this shit was just optional you don't really need to do that uh but it does help even though you know it's it's minor but it does help again i, I do think this thing is awesome um i definitely like shooting it more than my ak's um so i'll say that <laughs> I don't know if I would trust it more than my AKs, though, um, just due to the, uh, the, the the widespread nature of it, or the widespread issues that these things seem to be having, although mine has been flawless. Um, I'm going to probably have to run a couple thousand rounds through it before I can just say, hey, this thing is badass. You know, I, I trust my life to it. But as of right now, it's been working for me just fine, and I like it quite a bit. Um, with that said, the factory sights uh I, I think i talked about these in my last video they're they're like super beefy and super robust um you know there's i mean there's there's not really much else i can say about this this thing other than like you know it works uh with these upgrades that i've installed make it a better rifle than it was out of the box and again i, I could definitely uh make a pretty sound argument that this is probably the best overall 762 by 39 gun out there um i hope that you know the the issues that you guys are having that uh, you know that you guys that have these things that are having issues i hope cz takes care of y'all and gets that shit worked out i hear they're swapping five five six rifles for some people i'm gonna keep mine i fucking love this thing you know I, i'm fully stocked on mags on it now and yeah, of course, these mags are proprietary, so before anybody asks, these are not compatible with ARs, they are not compatible with AKs. They are completely proprietary. This magwell uh, is kind of like AK magwell size, so it, like if you even tried to insert an AR mag, it's not even going to catch. You need like a, there's like a spacer or a sleeve that uh, you can get that uh, fits in here that will allow you to run AR mags, which I actually have one. 
Um, so I can actually convert this to run uh, 762 by 39 AR mags, just like that. Just pop that sleeve in there and boom, I can run 762 by 39 mags. However, these are definitely superior, if anybody asked. So yeah, last round bolt hold open. Um, they are very light, they are polymer, and they work. So the clear variants of these mags, I think, are like the first gen models. Um, I hear they have issues, but these are just fine. I have no issues with these whatsoever. I think there's actually a little steel insert right there on the front. As you can see, maybe you can see it, hopefully. Anyway, uh, no other steel reinforcements in the bag that I can see anywhere else, so not in the feed lips. I mean, you know, this is the only locking lug that it has. It's very much AR-like, but uh, yeah, they work, so no complaints there. So other than that, yeah, I like the rifle a lot. Um, I would definitely recommend it, um, especially in 5.56. I know those tend to work just fine. These 7.62 by 39 variants, I would imagine, are probably uh, going to be a little rare to find because... Um, I've been hearing some things about them and in, the in that uh, production on them has been paused. I don't know how true that is, but that's just what I've heard. With that said, if you happen to get one of these and it runs for you just fine, great. Uh, you'll have an awesome little rifle, pistol, whatever you want to you know, set it up as. Um, but yeah, I, I love this thing. Um, I, I don't know if I can wholeheartedly recommend the 7.62 variant, but yeah, the 5.56, definitely buy that shit. Those things are awesome. Um, with that said, I'm, I might do another follow-up video on this thing later. Uh, I, I think I probably covered most of what I would care to say about this thing between the first and, or, you know, between this video and the first video I made. But yeah, if you guys have any questions or want to comment, just drop them in the comment section. And uh, yeah, have a good one.